Now, before we begin, I want to peel back the curtain a little bit on what it is that Create React App was doing for us. Because Create React App sets up a lot for us, and when we were writing our code, it kind of seemed like there was a lot of magic happening. But I'm going to show you what React and React DOM as libraries do. And I'm just going to use pure vanilla JavaScript and some HTML. It's actually incredibly easy. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder called Pure React. And inside of Pure React, I am going to make a source folder. And then inside of our source folder, I'm going to make a index.html file. And then we're going to open it up. Now, inside of our index.html file, I'm going to just generate our basic HTML, right? Our basic base HTML. And then I'm going to, in the body, add in that div that we first saw inside of our monsters Rolodex with the ID of root. Now, if you remember, what we do in our index.js file is we replace that root div with the actual content of our application. So that's what we need to do as well. We need that same thing, right? And then we're going to include the two packages, React and React DOM. In order to do that, I'm just going to add a script tag where the source goes to the React project. So this is something called unpackage which lets us very easily bring in the React library just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with React DOM. And now our React project has both these libraries. So why are there two, right? Well, React is kind of just the API, right? But then the thing that actually renders out to the DOM is what React DOM is. The reason for this is because React is a great kind of engine, right? But you could have many different views that run on the same engine. So React DOM is for the web, and you might have heard of React Native. React Native is actually exactly what it is. It's for native Android and iOS. So while it uses the same React engine, it uses a different package other than React DOM to render its Android and iOS views. So that's why it's such a great package, because you can even find ones like React 360 if you want to build 3D stuff, right? Like virtual reality stuff. Um, but that's all we're doing. We're just pulling in these two packages. Now, to show that it actually removes what's inside of this root div when we actually render in our React code, I'm just going to put in here React not rendered first. So let's open up our index.html in the browser. And now we'll see that React is not rendered, right? Because we haven't actually done that call where we replace the content inside of this div with our application. And we haven't even built the application yet. But first, if we open up our dev tools, we can actually see now, because we pulled in both those packages, we have access to both React and React DOM, right? These are the objects that the two packages provide into our global JavaScript namespace once we brought those packages in. And this is pretty much the same thing that we do when we import in React and React DOM into our files. It just gives us access to these two things, right? Now, I'm going to actually add my own script tag. And inside, we're going to start writing our own JavaScript to see what it is that these libraries do for us. So first, I'm going to write a functional component called app, the same way we were writing them before. Except this time, what I'm going to return is react.createElement. Now, createElement is a function on React that builds out those elements that we saw when we wrote our return, right? Inside of like, let's say our cardless component, right? It just, we return from this function, this HTML markup. Well, create element is actually what it's doing. But instead of JSX, this is vanilla, right? So what we got to do is we write in here that we want to make a div, right? You can put any other HTML tag or whatever that you're looking for, but I want a div. So I'm going to put div. 
And then the second argument is an object of any attributes that I want to add to my div. So if I wanted to add a class or an ID, right, I would put them in here, right? So like if I wanted a class, right, then I would put like, you know, a card list the same way I did before, right? But I don't want one. So I'm just gonna keep it empty. And then the third and last argument is any children we want to nest inside of our div, right? So I want to put in react.createElement again, right? And I'm gonna put in an h1. Again, I don't want any attributes. And inside of our h1, I'm gonna put the text react is rendered, right? And now we have our functional component and I'm gonna call react dom dot render. I'm gonna put in react create element again, right? And I'm gonna put in our app. I'm not actually gonna give it these two because these are actually optional, right? These last two arguments are completely optional. I don't want attributes, I don't want children, right? And then you remember with our render, we gotta target that element that we want. So get element by ID of root. And just like that, if we refresh, React is rendered, right? That's all we were doing here, except with JSX. But now we're just doing it with vanilla JavaScript, right? That's all it's doing, React DOM dot render, right? We're creating that our application, right? And just like that, we that's all the React library does for us. It just helps us create these HTML elements using functions or classes, right? Now, let's actually take this a step further. Now, let's say I wanted to make a const person, right? And const person is the same thing. It just react.createElement, and inside is a div, right? No attributes. And instead, what I want to render is an array. So if we wanted multiple elements, right? We want multiple children inside of this div, we would just use an array. And inside, I would do react.createElement, h1, and then an empty object. And I'm going to put yihua. And then I'm going to make another one, except it's going to be a p tag. And it's going to say developer. And now, instead of just rendering in our application that h1 of React is rendered, right? I'm also going to render in multiple persons. I'm going to do react.createElement person, and I'm going to do it three times. Now, if we check our application, We'll see, right? We rendered our person component three times. Yihua, developer, Yihua, developer, Yihua, developer. Now, we card coded these values, but what if we wanted to do the same thing we did with our other components, right? We wanted to use props. Well, because it's just a functional component as we had before, we can do exactly that. We can pass props into this, right? And instead of Yihua, we can do something like props.name, right? or props.occupation, and these are whatever it is that the attributes are that we want for this component to take, right? So now, if we wanted to actually add those in, we would do our name inside of that second argument with that empty object, right? We do our attributes of name of Yihua, and then occupation of developer. And now we can do the same thing, right, for these other three. And this one will be Andre, instructor, and let's say Ted, and he's an actor, right? Now, if we look at our application, we see we can pass in our props, right? That's all we were doing when we were writing our functional components and our class components. It's just that with JSX, we don't have to call React.create element constantly, right? It knows to read from that HTML markup that we were writing. And that's why JSX is so good when we use it with React because this is kind of redundant, right? It's just a quality of life improvement. Now, 
you might be wondering, how would we do it with our class components, right? It's actually the exact same. So instead of an app, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to make a class app extends react.component, right? Because component is just the method that exists on React, right? Sorry, it's a class that exists on React that it exposes to us. And then we have access to that render again. And in that render, I'm just going to return what it is that we had here. And now instead of app being a functional component, we're still rendering our class component of app. And if we look, we'll see that our application stays the same. That's all it is. That's all React does for us. It helps us build out these views. And that's why React and React DOM are such great libraries, because it just helps us simply build out our views and manage figuring out what the right thing in our views is to update.